Hi, I'm Connor with Customer Dynamics. In our first Power BI blog, we gave a quick tease of the various Power BI features. In our second blog, we looked at what the licensing was that was required in order to take advantage of various portions of Power BI. In this blog, we're going to go into a little bit more depth and do a practical experiment. I'm going to connect Power BI and Excel to a CRM online instance. We're going to import two tables, filter some columns, expand some columns, replace data codes with values, put data into Power View so that we can create some interesting um, tables and charts, and then we're going to also quickly look at Power Map. We're going to upload our work into SharePoint, and then we're going to try and embed that into CRM so that on a CRM form like an account, we could take advantage of some of this Power BI information. So the first thing I need to do is I need to open up Excel, and I need to go to my Power Query tab. And we're going to take a look at the various sources that we can get data from. There's from the web, there may be a website with a table on it uh, that we want to scrape information off of. You'll in input a URL there. There's from various Excel files. There's from a SQL database or an Access database or something hosted on Windows Azure or Oracle database. And then we have other sources. Um, there's from a SharePoint file list where you're really only going to get a list of file names and dates that they were modified, an OData feed, which we'll come back to, um, the Windows Azure Marketplace, um, where people have placed databases online with lots of information that you can go and you can import the data. There's lots of free uh, data sources. There are also lots of databases available for a fee. Um, we can link to Active Directory and pull different fields off of Active Directory records like uh, mobile numbers or access permissions. Um, we can go into Exchange. We can link to Facebook. But what we're going to focus on is the OData feed. And this is how I can connect into a CRM online instance and actually get to look at the data structure of CRM online. Some of you are familiar with CRM on-premise and working inside the SQL database there to pull up reports. In this case, um, we get to tap into the online data structure. Not quite as intuitive and as fast as if we did a connection to an on-premise SQL database, but this works okay. So where do we get this OData feed? Well, we go into our CRM instance, and in under Settings and Customizations, under the Developer Resources, there are a whole series of, le of links. And the one that we want is the OData REST. So we're going to copy this link. We'll probably open it up, and we can just highlight this URL, copy it, and then take it into CRM. We're going to paste it and hit OK. In a moment, you'll see that we're logging into um, our dynamic CRM site. So we've connected in CRM. You may have gotten a couple prompts about um, data source settings and credentials. I want to show you those quickly. Um, so we're going to go in and we're going to edit our credential. You would need to do this if you needed to update a password or something like that also. Um, in this case, because we're connecting to CRM online, I'm going to use an organizational account. I could switch it to use a different user. Um, I'm going to click Save. So I'm going to expand my list of tables that are available, and I'm going to click this, select multiple items, so I can grab two different tables. So this is the full list of tables that is in CRM. There are also some add-ins in this example. There's an ADX Studio um, install that's complicating the database just a little bit. But the important thing is that we grab our account set, and let's also grab our opportunity set. So I have my selected items, and I have two options. I can load into the data model, or I can load into the worksheet. I can do both of them. Loading into the worksheet limits me to a million rows. It's an Excel limit. Loading into the data model allows me to go unlimited. I'm going to click both. You could click just one if you have a smaller data set. Loading into the worksheet, I found it's just more intuitive. You get to see your information in Excel the way you're used to. Loading into the data model, you have to have a little bit more of a database administrator mindset. Um, in this case, I'm going to do both just for simplicity. We're going to click load. And so now I have created two sheets. Um, just to keep things nice and clear, I'm going to Refresh this and rename my account. So 
So here are my two tabs. One has my account set of information, and one has my opportunity set of information. You can see Power BI is loading information from CRM into these worksheets. So we're going to let that go for a moment. So as you can see, we came back with 534 rows in the account set, which means we probably have 534 accounts in our system. And we also have 194 in the opportunity set. And as you can see, this is a pretty expansive list. Um, I could keep all this information, or I could go in and I could clean up my opportunity set just a little bit. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to edit. And here I go into the query editor. And my first step is that I'm just connecting to the source. You can click the little gear icon to bring up your settings. I know that my source is my OData feed. And then I can start to add steps. Now, it's important to understand what the query editor is doing here. This first step is just to connect to the database and pull everything in. As an additional step, I can go in and I can highlight only the columns that I want. Now it just so happens that I've gone into CRM and I've jotted down the um, description names and field names from CRM of the fields that I'm looking for. In this case, on the opportunity set, I'd really like to know things like um, the close probability, the status, the estimated revenue, the weighted revenue, the name or description, the parent account ID and name so that I can link back to the account and then a custom field which is new underscore pass type. So you can see right off the bat here I have my new underscore pass type and I know I'm going to want that so in this case I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to continue down the list until I see a couple more that I might want. I notice here that here's a status code so I'm going to select control and I'm going to click so that I have all of, I have my two columns highlighted and then offline, I'm just going to quickly go through and I'm going to highlight the columns that I want and I'm going to remove the other columns that I don't want. And all I'm doing is I'm simplifying my list of columns here. So I have a selection of columns and I can go to remove other columns. So I'm going to remove everything that hasn't been selected. Power BI refreshes and then I'm down to my smaller list. Um, the next thing I notice is that some of the items that I wanted, like my new underscore pass type, are showing a record. So I'm going to click this little expand button. And I'm going to, I don't want the ID, I don't want the logical name, I just want the regular name. So I'm going to unselect these others, I'm going to click OK, and it's going to add a step that's expand new pass type, and it's going to come back with only the name on it. Okay, so we've come back. There are a few records that don't have any information, but here I have my Eco Pass, Eco Rail, Trip Rewards, Youth Pass, different types of passes. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on the parent account ID. If I just click on a record, down below it shows me what those different types are. The, so for this particular record, the account ID shows that the normal name is a store, the logical name is account, and then the ID is this long code, which is a really just a, key, a database key. So in this case, I want the ID, I want the name, I don't really need the logical name, so I'm going to click OK. I selected two, so I just expanded this column, and now I have my account ID, which is my key, and my um, easy to look at account name. And I'm just going to keep going down the list and do this. I know that I want just the name of the person, and I'm not going to link to their record um, in CRM, so I'm just going to only get the name. So there are some fields where there's a record, but there's really only one field behind it, and it's Power BI just wants you to expand this out and pick the field. Um, it may be because there's a linking to another table that's automatically detecting. Um, I'm going to expand this, and I'm just going to pick the value. Now, in this case, it's important to understand that the value, this is a pick list inside of CRM. And so in the database on the opportunity table, we only get the value code. Now what do we do about that? Well, we could go try and find where in the database these value codes associate to something. In this case, it would be canceled, in progress, one. Um, or we could simply transform the data right here. So I'm going to highlight the entire column. I know that this column is, an, is in a number format by the data type number. Well, I'm going to need to convert this first to text. 
and I'm not actually changing anything in the database, what we're doing here is we're running down a series of steps that every time Power BI reconnects with that OData feed and CRM, it's going to pull the data, it's going to remove my XX columns, it's going to expand them. It's basically kind of like a micro that recreates my steps every time. So I've converted this column to text inside of Power BI, and now I'm actually going to replace values. So it just so happens that I know in CRM that a value of 1 is in progress. So I'm going to replace everywhere that it finds a value of 1 with in progress. And Power BI will refresh, and all these 1s should replace to in progress. I'm just going to quickly do this for the other types. One thing that I should point out is don't panic. Power BI is just showing you a representative sample um, if you don't see all of your records here. We know if we go back to this, we can see that there are 194 rows that will be loaded. Often power, the query editor will only show you a representative sample just to make this loading just a little bit faster. So you may not see all of your status codes, so you should certainly fill them out. Um, for some reason, it's not picking up the threes and the fours. I'll come back to that. There's a little bit of massaging that we can do. We can go in and we can edit using the sprockets on some of our steps here. Um, I should also point out that if I click back to other steps, um, you can see I, it's kind of like looking back in time before I've done all my transformations. If I'm up here on the list, so if I wanted to go back and I wanted to see all of my columns, um, I could just go back to my source step. And you can insert steps, but you have to be really careful not to mess up a future step. So if I remove a column that's referenced later, you'll get a bunch of error codes. Um, you also want to be careful removing columns because I have yet to find a way to add them back in, even duplicating the column. So if somebody out there knows how to add them back in in a later step once they've been removed without relinking to a, a table again, please let me know in the comments. Okay, so we've imported our two tables, we've filtered some columns out, we've expanded some columns, we've replaced data codes um, with values that are, are readable. Now we're going to hit apply and close. And our opportunity set will refresh um, and we'll see here in a moment that, um, well we can already see that the new pass type, I'm showing my name, it's loading data from CRM right now. If I wanted to continue to edit, or I wanted to cancel this loading, I could just I could go to edit, or I could cancel. One thing that uh, Power BI will do is it will try and detect relationships between your various account sets. So in this case, I have my parent account ID on here. It may find that hey, you have this account ID in the account set. Do you want to link them? And it'll do that automatically. All right, so our refresh is finished. And you can see I have my pass type um, and my account ID. One thing that I should go back and do quickly is these are some terrible names. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to highlight an entire column and I'm going to rename and I'm going to do pass type. And this will save you a lot of headache later um, when you're pulling these into good looking power views and power mappings to just rename these now. And you can see you're going to rename the columns in a step. So if you, if you update your information in CRM and a month later you reopen this workbook, it's going to do all this massaging for you automatically. So, so through the magic of blogs, I have skipped ahead. And you can see I have my account set, my opportunity set. They're all filtered. Um, I've imported them into the worksheet, and I've also loaded them into the data set. Uh, in the worksheet, you can see I've got my column names. Um, set nicely and I have my columns expanded and renamed as they need to be. Um, I'd like to show you quickly show you Power Pivot. Because I've loaded these queries into the data model, they're also accessible under Power Pivot. So if I click on Manage, I have my various sets. Um, and I can go into the diagram view. And you can see I've created a link between the account ID on account set one and the parent account ID on opportunity set one. And that's a simple drag and drop to create the connection um, from this power 
pivot, I can add other databases. So let's say I had a unique key in CRM that linked to an on-premise CRM system. Um, I could create additional connections out to even more data resources. Um, and I could start linking databases together and mashing all that information into one table and starting to report on it. So Power BI really provides you the ability to connect disparate um, data sources together if you have that linking available. So we're going to close this out. Um, and I'm going to go into my Power View. And in this case, I've already gone in and I've created a Power View. Here are my account sets. Um, I have a linking between this account set and this opportunity set um, designated by the little database icon here. Um, and then because I've also loaded these data sets into the worksheet, there's a duplicate here. Um, if you're really working on this seriously, I would encourage you to pick one or the other. Um, this is just for my example so that I can show you both styles. Um, so let's, uh, let's go back to our account set and let's just start from scratch and we'll insert a new power view. And we're going to create a power view sheet. Okay, so I know that I am interested in, let's say, comparing how many of each pass type I have sold. So I'm going to drag out my pass type and it drops on my various pass types. Um, and then I'm going to drag out my pass count. I'm going to drag it out there. And then, of course, even more important to me than my um, pass count is what the value to me of those passes is. So here's my contract value. It doesn't seem like I'm getting any value out of my trip rewards or youth passes. And I have a whole bunch of records that looks like I haven't designated a pass type or a pass count. So I might want to follow up with one of my data stewards to find out what's going on. Um, so as you can see, I have fields building in down here of pass type, pass count. Um, there's a little summation on here. Um, I could do an average, so instead of a count of how many eco rail or eco passes, um, I could do what is the average. So I know an average eco rail contract is for 227 passes, an average eco pass contract is for 216. I could change this back to the sum or just a count instead of um, how many of each type. And then what I can also do is I can drop the um, contract value off and I can highlight this and I can convert this to a column chart. So I'm going to go do a stacked column, just a little bit more visually pleasing. Now I can see, okay, I've got my eco rail, my eco pass. Um, what if I was interested in seeing what was, um, what was open versus one on contract? So I'm going to drag out my contract status. And then you can see in progress, I just have a couple eco passes, and then I've won a lot of eco passes. So depending on what the contract length is, like I'm going to wonder why there are so few that's in my pipeline. So what if I wanted to know who sold what? Um, I could drag the owner name into these filters here. And I've got four people working for me, apparently. And let's say I only want to see Christie's work, I can see that she's the one who appears to have a lot in progress. Um, I've got an eco rail, an eco pass, a trip award, a youth pass. So with this filter I can sit here and I can see who has sold um, what different pass types. And I've realized just by doing my filtering that it looks like there is a there are a few eco rail and um, different trip types. Uh, maybe I would add a status filter onto contract status onto my view filters because it looks like when I look at um, all I don't get to see that detail so um, I'm going to change this so that we're going to get rid of our one just so that I can see what's in my pipeline and okay so there are a few there are 64 eco rail and there are 60 trip rewards types available and so by dragging different columns out, I can build out my view. And I can look at um, my pass count by type, my pass count by 
owner and who's done the selling, my um, pass count by my account type. This is where the linking of the account set and the opportunity set comes in handy because I can see of my accounts that are corporate, I've done 28,000 in sales. Um, and then I also have my list of accounts here um, and my contract values for each of those accounts and my totals at the bottom. And where this kind of gets interesting is if I have columns down here, I can click on a column and I can say, okay, show me only on the eco pass that were to corporate sales, um, the makeup of those. So here's my eco pass only, and I can see my three salespeople who've been successful with the eco pass. I'm only looking at corporate accounts. Oh, but there's only one corporate account, apparently. Um, so let's click back on this to bring back a full focus. Okay, so instead we'll look at government. Obviously, this is a sample data set, so these really aren't government entities. Um, but here I am, I've clicked on government only, and I can see that I have $555,000 worth of contracts open for the government. Now, my question is, of these, how many are one? So I can click on my filter again. And how many are in progress? So I'm only going to show in progress, government type. Now, uh, see my number drops. So, and I can see that it seems like Kenzie is pretty good at pushing government. Um, and here's my government type. And it looks like they're only looking at eco passes and maybe the trip reward type. So, I have pushed my Excel document up to um, Power BI. Uh, and this is really just a SharePoint add on. Um, but what's fancy about it is, especially if you're using the data sets you're able to upload enormous workbooks up into uh, SharePoint. And SharePoint usually has uh, a megabyte limit, but if you're, using that, if you're using that Power Query tool with a Power BI implementation on SharePoint, you can explode your workbook size to something like 250 megs. Um, and if you're using the Power Query, you can go even beyond that. Um, and you can see I've favorited these, so I can also open up my tablet with the Power BI app, and I can share some of these data sets and views out to people who are on the go. Um, and imagine they have no connection to CRM. I've set up my connection to, to CRM through Excel. Um, if I was on-premise on the SharePoint site, I could set up the data set to go and automatically reschedule, refresh on a schedule, because we're pointing to OData, the functionality to refresh on a certain schedule isn't there yet, you would need to open up the full file and schedule that refresh if you are on-prem. There is a tool that you install on-premise which pushes your data on a schedule up to the cloud onto SharePoint. You can manage that in the Power BI administration portal. And then I can also take these reports that I've done. I've also done a map of um, different bus stops for example, and I've pushed those into CRM. So imagine I have a workbook that has a database of all the bus stop locations mapped in the Power BI mapping tool, and then I go into CRM and I embed in CRM if I have the um, Office 365 SharePoint, Power BI, and web apps tool, I can embed this Excel web app into CRM and I can have my mapping inside of CRM. So why is this so great? Well, I have my embedded file here. I'm going to pop it out. I'm going to look at the full file and you can see it's just repointing. So in this example, if Jane went into SharePoint in the morning and updated a stop location, in SharePoint on this Excel file, the stop location would update automatically on this map. If Joe then later in the day got into CRM, went into an account and wanted to look up at the bus look up the bus stops that are close to this account, he could he'd see that um, immediately updated bus stop location that Jane put in that morning. You could also start to link all kinds of different metrics and you can give Joe access to dashboards related to the account or, or to some bigger metric that you wanted them to have access to inside of CRM. This guy really starts to be the limit on the kinds of things that you could do with this.
So how did I do this? Well, this is pretty cool. I'm on the account form editor, and all I did was I added in an iframe, and I pasted in my URL Excel file. So I just copied the URL, and as long as you're logged in in CRM to the same user that has access to SharePoint online and the Power BI site, you're good to go to be able to view this kind of information. It's pretty cool, the integration that's available. Again, I'm Conrad Thiel with Customer Dynamics, and I hope this tutorial has been a little helpful for you. It should at least give you a taste and get you down the road of learning a little bit about CRM data structures, Power BI, and embedding, and some of the really fun things that you can do with this. Thank you for your time.